Everyone has their own definition for what rock and roll means. The origins and influences are widespread and distinctive, but I want to tell you about one musician who has Texas roots and changed the way rock music was written and performed forever. I'm talking about Charles Hardin Holly, or more commonly known as Buddy Holly. <laughs> Buddy Holly's music has a signature sound that has influenced music for decades since his career began. You'll hear music styles influenced by Holly throughout this lesson. Let's first start from the beginning. Buddy Holly was born in 1936 in Lubbock, Texas. One of four children in the house, he earned the nickname Buddy and was surrounded by family members who either sang or played an instrument. So early in life, Buddy did too. At only five, Holly entered a talent show along with his older brothers playing the violin, or at least wanting to. He couldn't actually play it yet, so his brothers greased the strings so it wouldn't make a sound. The brothers won that contest and were awarded $5. At 11, Buddy tried piano, but stopped after about nine months. It was soon after he switched to guitar and found his groove. Through the rest of his school years, Holly would create musical groups with some of his peers, many performing live gigs in Lubbock. While Holly was influenced early on by country and western, he started to blend in the R&B he heard on late night radio into his own music. After graduating from Lubbock High School, Holly decided to make music his career. A big influence was seeing Elvis Presley perform live in Lubbock, who he then opened for not just once, but three separate times in the same year. Holly Style continued to make the transition from country to more like Presley's rock and roll. Now the way the rest of Buddy Holly's family spells their last name is H-O-L-L-E-Y. The reason he lost the E wasn't his doing. When a record producer signed him to his first contract, the last name on the dotted line was H-O-L-L-Y. An accidental misspelling gave us Buddy Holly with no E. Holly took on the role as lead guitarist for his band, with Jerry Allison on the drums, Nicky Sullivan on rhythm guitar, and Joey Malden on the bass. His drummer suggested the name The Crickets, influenced by other groups named after birds. Under this new band name, these musicians released That'll Be The Day on May 27, 1957, which peaked at number three on the Billboard Top 100 chart that September, and remains one of the top rock and roll songs of the 1950s. Now let's go back to their name real quick, The Crickets. It might remind you of another band name from this era, and it should, because the group once known as The Quarrymen, also Johnny and the Moondogs, had short-term bassist Stuart Sutcliffe suggest to name their group after Buddy Holly's group and change their name to The Beatles. It was at this point Holly's career really started to take off. While That'll Be The Day sat atop the charts in September of 1957, Buddy Holly and the Crickets released Peggy Sue, which also made it to the top three of the Billboard's pop chart. That December, Buddy Holly and the Crickets performed on The Ed Sullivan Show, a variety show where countless up and coming musicians and bands showed up on before going on to find fame. These four started in 1958 by joining America's Greatest Teenage Recording Stars Tour. The group traveled to Hawaii, Australia, and the United Kingdom all within the first couple months of the year. It was later in 1958 that Holly met Maria Elena Santiago. At their first encounter, he asked her to go on a date. At this date, Holly asked Santiago to marry him. On August 15, 1958, they were married. Later that year, Holly split from his manager after disagreements over royalties and payments, and also split with his current band members to form a new group. With fellow rock and roll musicians Richie Valens and the big bopper J.P. Richardson, Holly charted a four-seated airplane to go from Mason City, Iowa to Moorhead, Minnesota as a part of the Winter Dance Party Tour. 
Shortly after taking off in bad weather, the plane crashed, taking the lives of these three musicians and making February 3rd, 1959 universally known as the day the music died. Living until he was about 22 years old, Holly's career only lasted about 500 days. There are only a handful of videos you can even find of him performing. Even so, the demand for his music allowed for new albums and singles to be released for the next 10 years. Countless artists have pointed to Holly for their inspiration, including a 17-year-old Bob Dylan. He saw Holly perform two nights before his death. Dylan later referenced him when accepting the Nobel Peace Prize in Literature in 2016. <music> Nearly 30 years after his death, Holly was honored by being a part of the first class in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, with museum leaders calling him an innovator and someone who made a major and lasting impact on popular music. In the same year, the Songwriters Hall of Fame also inducted Holly, saying he changed the face of rock and roll. Lubbock has found many ways to honor their hometown celebrity, including the Buddy Holly Center, filled with Holly memorabilia and fine arts gallery. 10 years ago, Holly's wife helped establish the Buddy Holly Educational Foundation, which helped support writers and musicians around the country and world, with ambassadors such as Mick Jagger, Dolly Parton, and Ed Sheeran. The foundation's main goal is to empower artists to think big, to think bold, and to think differently. It was a life cut too short, but a life worth remembering. There was music there at the beginning and right up to the end. While it's now been more than 60 years since Holly passed away, I'd like for you to hear from people who know their music and want to let you know what they think of Buddy Holly. I think the two primal forces in the 50s at that time, in the mid-50s, were, were Elvis and um, Buddy Holly. He was a very proud Texan, you know, a Lone Star State, and you know, he was, he was, uh, he was a tall Texan, very, a beautiful guy, beautiful guy. He had such a, such a glittering and such a tragically short career, but boy, he changed the world, Buddy, completely in that time. <laughs> 